Hi there and welcome to the Duke of Scopy Studios in Geneva. I'm Jessica Walker and today I am joined by Dan Lefolli to discuss marine protection and conservation. Welcome Dan. Right, it's a pleasure to be here. So how has progress in protecting the ocean been made in recent years? Well, one of the challenges we've faced is, is knowing how to do the right thing for the ocean. How do we protect it? And we were putting in place special areas called marine protected areas. And the governments of the world have come together and, uh, and set a target for 2020 of protecting 10% of the ocean through this means. In, in a sense, you can think of it as giving the ocean a breathing space from our activities, whether it's from fishing or mining or dredging. Um, and it needs that place to recover, to replenish and to, uh, to enable uh, life to flourish in the future. So what can be done and what challenges are faced in ocean protection? Well, what we can do is one of the things we need to do is we need to make more progress. So, so I, I mentioned the target of 10% and uh, the combined effort of the countries around the world has protected around 3.5%. 4%. So we've got a, a distance to go by 2020. So what we really need is for people to make a, a much greater connection between their, their health and welfare and uh, protecting the ocean to, it ensure, to ensure it helps us in the future. So we need to step up progress. We need to, to understand more our relationship with the ocean. We need to make sustainable seed food choices when we go out shopping, for example. And in that way, we can have a, a more optimistic future, I think. And also, what causes ocean acidification and how can it affect aquaculture? Well, ocean acidification is one of the, the more recent challenges that we've faced. So when you think of the ocean, a lot of people will think the problem's perhaps overfishing. And it's true we need to deal with that, but in recent years we've found that the, the, the ocean is, is getting warmer because of climate change, but also the, the, the chemistry of the ocean is changing because of the amount of carbon dioxide going into the atmosphere. It's not just something we should worry about on land, it's actually going into the ocean, it's driving it to more acidic conditions, and that's going to produce real challenges for some really important industries like aquaculture, the, the, the growing of, 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 um, of, of scallops and, uh, and oysters and such. Because what's happening is that the, the young life stages are very sensitive, like our children are very sensitive to, to, to uh, particular kind of, you want to avoid particular chemicals and things like that. And, and so the ocean is similar. And so it's making it much more difficult for, for those types of things to, to start to uh, be able to re reproduce. So obviously this is a very large and serious matter. What can people do on a day-to-day -day basis to help? So I think it's about understanding, first of all, your connection. So, so every second or third breath you take connects you to the ocean. It's the ocean that's providing some of the, the oxygen that we breathe. Um, every drop of water links you to the ocean. So we're, we live on an ocean planet, we're inherently linked, and there are many things people can do. Uh, I mentioned sustainable seafood choices. You can choose to eat uh, species of fish and other things from the ocean that are sustainably harvested. You can think of the, the connection you make with some of the chemicals you use in a, a daily life, whether it's what you put down the sink or the cosmetics that you use. Some of them react with uh, species in the ocean. So understanding these links and, and making wise choices when you go shopping is one of the things that we can do. Another very important thing is to, to lend your voice to the fact that very little of the ocean is actually protected at the moment. We need to protect much more if we're going to sustain some of the things we like into the future. And so in that way, we can all be part of the, the, the process, just in the same way that the ocean is actually made up of billions of small drops of water. They all count, and so everyone's voice counts in this process too. That's great. Well, thank you, Dan, for coming in today. It was an absolute pleasure to talk to you. It's a pleasure. Thank you. Well, that's all that we have time for today. But for further updates and interviews, do check out the Tukoscopy website. Goodbye for now. Thank <laughs> you.